Give me a training camp sleeper that you're expecting to break out. A sleeper. Um, I got a couple. Jordan Mason, for sure, if he's a sleeper. I don't know if he's a sleeper, but I think he's. I think he could definitely break out. I loved how thin and how light he looked, how explosive he looked. He was probably 240 last year. No, no fat, but this year he looks like 225, 228, and just fast. And so I think he has a, has enough talent to really bust out. And then on defense, you know, Kalia Davis, 93 up front. I mean, um, he's sitting third on the depth chart. You got Hargrave, you got Armstead, you got Kinlaw, you got Givens, you got T.Y. McGill. Um, but Kalia Davis has the kind of speed at defensive tackle that is could be a game-changing type speed and – he was a linebacker in college. He kind of kept getting bigger and bigger, but the production, the motor, the foot speed, I think he, and he's 315 pounds. I, I think he's got potential to really show up and, and, you know, the 315 pound guys don't, don't move like that. Um, it was an incredible draft choice. If he fulfills his potential now, last year was his red shirt year. This is his go year. Nobody's banking on him. I, I think Kalia Davis could make a huge impact. Good call. I'm looking at the wide receivers. The way I look at it is the top four guys are set. Debo, Ayuk, Jawan Jennings, Ray Ray McLeod. I'm not sure they're going to keep six wide receivers. They look like they're going to be keeping more tight ends. Maybe it's a five wide receiver roster, in which case, who's it going to be? I think a lot of people would assume Danny Gray, but this team will wave a third round pick real quick. And although he is a deep threat, he drops a lot of passes. He catches with his chest. It is no guarantee he might get this job, but it's no guarantee he makes a team. And if it's not him, it could be Ronnie Bell. We saw him get a lot of targets in the offseason, and it also could be Tay Martin. Ronnie Bell drops some balls. Tay Martin does not drop the ball. Now, I don't know if he moves as well as Ronnie Bell. I, I'm intrigued with Tay Martin. I feel like that's a guy who's a real deep sleeper and who could actually make the team ahead of both of them as the number five wide receiver. You know, it's funny. I, I see this. I agree with you, but I see us a little differently. I see – I'm excited as heck about the wide receivers, Grant, because Ayuk and Debo are both really good and really intent on being bet, the best they've ever been, which could be a key to the season. But Jennings is that chain mover, and Gray's the guy who's the complimentary piece that runs off the coverage. I don't think – uh, Bell or Martin take Gray's job. I think Bell or Martin take Jawan's job. And I, I know Jawan's established, but I think also if they get down to it and Ronnie, if Ronnie Bell and Tay Martin have a good preseason and Jawan Jennings preseason is just okay, there, there, there's enough former 49er people around the league that like Jawan, I bet that they may be able to get a fifth round or a sixth round pick in next year's draft for Juwan. He's a free agent at the end of the year. I, I think there's very little chance that they'll pay him anything significant. And uh, I, I think he's the guy who could be in harm's way if Bell and Tay Martin go off. And I expect Bell and Tay Martin to be really, really good. So um, I think Gray's more battling, you know, Ray Ray, but I, you know, I've talked to Kyle about uh, Gray and, it's it's you know when you're a play caller you got to have that complimentary receiver who's got home run ability so unless gray just falls on his face i think he's on this team yeah um i i i see like i would bet like a thousand dollars that Jawan jennings is going to be on this team I mean, I I, there's no I question i know but, so I, I that's you. just how i, I feel yeah. With Danny Gray, the thing with Danny Gray is like, yeah, he is really fast and he can run off coverage, but he doesn't really play special teams. He had like 19 snaps on special teams last year. He but he did 87... make two key tackles on special teams late in the year, didn't he? He did, he's but he's a little he's a wide receiver. I mean, he's not an asset on special teams. He had 87 snaps on offense last year. He's very limited. He's not on the field very much. No. So I'm just curious. Like, they drafted Ronnie Bell for a reason. Ronnie Bell got a lot more targets in the offseason in front of the media than Danny Gray did. If Danny, if Ronnie Bell plays better than Danny Gray, even though their skill sets are different, I mean, if they're anticipating Brock Purdy being their guy for the next two, three years, I'm not sure Danny Gray fits his team anymore. Because hear, Brock Purdy I, can do no, a lot I, of stuff, but I think Danny Gray was here for Trey. No, I, I agree. I agree. I think, yeah. But I think Danny Gray also was here to make sure that Ayuk, Debo, Kittle, and McCaffrey don't just get beaten up underneath. So I... Yeah. I 
I, yeah. I really think that uh, Bell and Martin are going to fire, and I think they drafted Bell with an idea that they need a continuity piece to catch those key passes on third down, and they're not going to pay Juwan. I mean, I know I what you're saying, one. though, because Juwan is a key leader in the room. He's a Kyle loves personality. Him. Kyle loves him. The players love him. Um, they won't re-sign him, but I just can't see them getting rid of him early. But I, I got one more sleeper. I got one more sleeper. Braden Willis. Braden Willis. Ooh. Braden Willis. Braden Willis. I think this is the Niners Good like call. Ben Skoranek. They're a little different. I know Ben Skoranek's the wide receiver, but the whole idea of taking a non-fullback and motioning him into the backfield and using him as a fullback, I think that's kind of what the Niners want to do with Braden Willis eventually. And they were drafted. He was drafted right around the same spot as Skoranek was. That's a guy I think is going to be a big part of what they do. I love that one. I would totally, yeah. I totally concur on that. In fact, I'll go further yeah. and say, I think Braden Willis by midseason, will have established himself as tight end two. Ooh. Ooh. I think he's going to Again, be look at how there. the Rams use Skoranek. Skoranek's a really interesting piece. What they do is it's clever. McVay's good. Okay, they're an 11 personnel team, right? Three wide receivers. But in 11 personnel, your run blocking schemes are very limited. There's only so much you can do with one running back. So what you can do is run zone read, but they don't have that kind of uh, talent. So what they do is they motion Skoranek into the backfield. And so now you have a two-back formation against a nickel defense and you got that nickel back in the uh, you know trying to fill gaps between the tackles advantage offense or you could go base and you could have skoronic running routes against linebackers it's very clever and i think they're gonna do more of it this year it's so funny because K- kittle i retweeted a kittle thing did you see that kittle thing where he's talking about kyle moves this guy to this side and then the defense has to switch on the fly and it's about indecision and creating Basically, you're basically searching for creative ways to have the defense bust and you get big plays. We're in an era now where the in-between player who used to be kind of like, I don't know where he fits. Now that player is becoming a classic mismatch and it helps you hide your personnel groupings. It helps you kind of, uh, you know, cloud up what formation you're in, what grouping you're in. It creates indecision with the defense. And I I I, love, I think that's right on. That's Skoranek. Skoranek, and Skoranek that's Willis. A tight end is he a exactly. receiver? Is he a fullback? Is he, a, fullback? Is he right. a tight end? Yeah. Should we do I, nickel? Should we do base? Oh, we're kind of screwed either way, actually. And it's not. And it's like Skoranek isn't even that good. He was like almost the last pick in the draft. But if he hands. just has him as a starting flanker, yeah, that's not really doing anything for you. But if you get creative, all of a sudden now there's no real good way to stop him. Interesting. Right. That you line Skoranek up outside every down, and he's an easy cover. But if you move him around and you switch his position and you kind of, you know, kind of cloud up what personnel grouping you're in, and then suddenly you've got a miscommunication. Maybe you got a new player. It's week five. You got an injury. Somebody's in there, hasn't been in there. Boom, busted play, touchdown. Right. Because again, so Skoranek's on the field. It's 11 personnel. The defense says, okay, we're going to go nickel. Well, then the Rams see that and they're like, okay, well, we're going to put Skoranek at fullback and we're going to run power. And we're going to run power at your nickel, who's 185 pounds. How's that going to go? Okay, so we'll, let's go base then. All right, so you went base. I'm going to flex Skoranek out, put him in the slot, and now it's one-on-one against your linebacker. Like, what do you, how do you want to get burned by Ben Skoranek this time? It's very clever. The Niners could do, I think that's what they're going to try to do with Braden Willis. He's about an inch taller, 15 pounds bigger. Uh, good player. Anyway, I, love what Willis, I love what Willis yeah. offers as a uh, – the one thing the Niners have that is really rare, because I watch all these other teams around the league – the 49ers don't, for the most part, have a receiver, a tight end, or a back who tiptoes through the middle. Every other team in the league, you got guys who are kind of looking around. Ayuk, Debo, Juwan, Kittle. Um, these guys run through the middle of the field without any fear. And that's and and Brayden Willis fits in. The last perfect. wide receiver they had who, who tiptoed through the middle of the field. God love him. AJ Jenkins. Johnson Pettis. Dante oh, Pettis. Yeah. Dante Pettis. And yeah. that's why I don't think he ever, I mean, he's not that good to begin with, but he just didn't fit this team at all because of that. 